Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a more niche example and breaking down the unusual dipole moment of carbon monoxide and how it balances both inductive and resonance effects. Let's go ahead and get started. To understand the dipole moment of carbon monoxide, we need to review the two most important factors in determining dipoles to begin with. The first is going to be electronegativity. Consider the CCL bond. In this case, the carbon atom has an electronegativity of about 2.5 and chlorine is about a 3. Because chlorine is about 0.5 units higher than carbon, we would consider this bond as polar, with the chlorine withdrawing electron density from the carbon towards itself. This means that the CCL bond will have separated partial charges with a plus on the carbon and a minus on the chlorine. A dipole moment for, the, for this molecule would be indicated with the black arrow shown, pointing from the carbon to the chlorine. The other effect that changes dipoles are formal charges, often due to resonance effects. For example, let's look at the molecule below here called methoxybenzene or anisole. Because there is a single bonded oxygen adjacent to the benzene pi system, the lone pair on the oxygen can actually go ahead and donate into the pi system of the benzene to give several alternative resonance structures. We can represent that with some electron pushing arrows here, where we say that the oxygen would push one lone pair here, and that will give a negative charge there on that carbon, which can then once again move to give a negative charge here on this carbon, and then again, onto this carbon. So that would leave the oxygen with a partial positive charge to balance out the negative charges on the carbon. And so the overall resonance structure, if we were to combine them into a superposition, would look something like this, with the O with a, po with a positive charge and the oxygens at the ortho and para positions. These are the ortho positions and this is the para position with partial negative charges. The result of this is a dipole moment for this molecule that would point in this direction with the arrow pointing away from the oxygen and towards the benzene ring. Carbon monoxide is now going to give us a case of how we can balance those electronegativity and resonance effects together. Generally, we consider formal charge effects to trump inductive effects due to electronegativity. However, it varies on a case-by-case -case basis, so we need to go ahead and examine what's going to happen with the CO independent of what we see in other molecules. Let's start off with the electronegativity. If we look at the structure, we know that oxygen is going to be significantly more electronegative than carbon, about one electronegativity unit higher, in fact. So we expect a very strong inductive dipole pointing towards the O, especially because we have a triple bond, which means a lot of electron density, six whole electrons, are able to be pulled by the oxygen away from the carbon. On the other hand, if we look at formal charges, if we uh, go ahead and calculate them for the CO molecule, we would find that the O carries a partial positive charge and the C carries a par uh, formal negative charge, not partial charges, excuse me, formal positive and formal negative charges. So in that case, the dipole moment arrow would actually point towards the right, towards the carbon, which is the opposite direction as we see from the electronegativities, and it would suggest the true dipole is very strong in this direction since these formal charges are irreducible. We can't fold them in into any sort of extra double bond. They're just stuck there. So what is the real dipole moment of this molecule going to look like? Well, it turns out that the competing effects of electronegativity or induction and resonance are going to lead to a very small dipole moment for carbon monoxide of 0.12 Debye. It's basically nonpolar, which is very strange given the fact that we have a CO triple bond, which we would expect to be extremely polar given how polar the CO double bond is. However, uh, it turns out that in this case, the two effects almost perfectly cancel one another. Just to drive home how odd this is, let's go ahead and compare it to another molecule which also has inductive and resonance effects. So let's go ahead and take a look at the nitro group. And it First, let's look at the electronegativity differences associated with it. So, in the nitro group, we see oxygens double bonded and single bonded to nitrogen. And we know that O should withdraw from nitrogen in each direction because O is appreciably more electronegative than N. Now, normally a double bond is more polar than a single bond. However, in this case, because of resonance, it turns out those two bonds are actually exactly equivalent. 
uh, they are both going to look sort of like 1.5 bonds if you know a little bit about resonance structures. So it turns out that the dipole moments for each of those bonds will be represented by equivalent arrows pointing away from the nitrogen and towards the oxygen, leading to a net dipole for the NO2 based on electronegativity indicated by the red arrow. Those two arrow, the, the two dipole arrows for the individual bonds vector sum to give the red dipole moment based on electronegativity differences. Now, what if we consider formal charges? Well, if we go ahead and calculate the formal charges for this molecule, we would see that N carries a partial po a for formal positive charge and O carries a formal negative charge. Now, again, due to equivalency of the left and right bonds, we could also say that the uh, left oxygen could carry a formal negative charge instead of the right oxygen. And so the dipoles associated with those formal charges are going to be equal, pointing away from the nitrogen and towards the oxygen, from the positive formal charge towards the negative formal charge. And once again, they vector sum to give a straight up molecular dipole, indicated by the red arrow. And if you notice, in this case, the reinforcing effects of formal charge and resonance are opposite to what happened in carbon monoxide. Instead of destructive, destructively interfering, they are going to constructively interfere with one another. And that is going to lead to a very large dipole moment of about 3.46 Debye, which is almost double the polarity of a water molecule, which is typically considered as quite polar. Induction and formal charges are a very delicate balance in a molecule, and whether they add or subtract can lead to pretty extreme effects like a nonpolar carbon oxygen bond or a hyperpolar NO bond, which normally wouldn't be considered as uh, the typical case. And so with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out our other videos on the chemistry playlist to learn more, and if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists. See you next time!